Hey, well, good night. This is Flat Earth Aussie Roscoe here, formerly known as Flat Earth Aussie Jesus. And I'm just sitting here bottling beer and thinking about things that have happened over the last couple of weeks. Now, some people tell me that I'm the most boring, worst debater they've ever seen. Well, that's fine by me. I don't care. I really have no agenda uh, other than the truth. And whether you like me or not is really besides the point. But there comes a certain point in time where, you know, you, you put your foot down, you have an opinion, you have your say, and like, I'm not here to hate against anybody. If anything, you know, my whole agenda has always been uh, to spread truth and awareness to make the world a better place. That's all I've ever been set out to do. And yet, because there's a certain group of people who just hate so vehemently that you really have to pry a little bit further deep into their psychological makeup, who they are. And the current one at the moment who I am seeking to, to sort out what lies beneath the surface of this particular young chap. And he, he's not really that young either. He comes across actually as seriously looking more aged than he should do at that age, whatever his age might be. He goes across the interwebs the YouTubes and so on, as a fella who calls himself Team Skeptic. Now, that's fine. I would have thought somebody who's skeptical. Absolutely. I'm on that team. I'm skeptical of everything. You name it. But it turns out that the name Team Skeptic is just a name. In actual fact, he's a kiss ass. He, he wants the kiss or leak the ass and the boots of anything that's mainstream so to call yourself skeptical and be such a lick ass or boot licker a brown noser um, <sighs> beats the shit out of me team skeptic how you can call yourself by such a name and still make appearances on the internet but as it turns out ah well you and i were supposed to have a debate a week ago sunday so that's today being thursday evening tomorrow's friday saturday sunday 26th i believe it will be uh two weeks prior to that take away 14 <laughs> uh, you and I were supposed to have had a debate. You called in sick at the last minute, you know, with one or two hours to go. Oh, you're sick, you can't make it. That's okay, you know, like, hell, we all have our moments. Well, some of us do because we don't know how to eat, right? We don't know how to get proper medication from the food and the sun and the fresh air that we live amongst. I mean, I haven't had a sickie since the last time I banged my knee up, and that was about a year ago, and that's only because I was pissed blind drunk. And had a bit of a fall in somebody's garden when I'm out having a leak in the middle of the night. Scraped up my knee and, um, yeah. I had to get a doctor's certificate. It's like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, of course. Do your tests. Bend my knee back, all that. It all worked fine. Um, I don't get sick. I might overdo certain things occasionally. But 
but on the on the whole I basically moderate myself pretty well. I'm pretty moderate in all things. And so if I've made an agreement to turn up to a debate, I will turn up to the debate. No matter how hungover I might be. But um as it turns out, Mr. Team Skeptic has emailed the moderator of the debate that was going to be aired. It's called Modern Day Debate. His name is James Kunz. And James emailed me to say, well, I can show you the emails if you like. In fact, I will do that, because why not? It will make it easier to say it's not just hearsay, is it? So, here's my Galaxy S10, the one that won't save pictures for me, and we'll just go to apps, bloody email, uh, modern day debate. There's now nine different things. We'll start with the first one. Hi Ross, I hate to accidentally make you feel ambushed. We'll pause that if you doubt me. Um, but McToon shared a link with me that was a bit concerning, confusing, and I wanted to ask if you could share more. He shared a link of past posts, some of which seemed pretty brutal towards non-Aryan people as well as women. Blah, blah, blah. McToon.net slash flat or F-E-A-J slash backslash. My hope is this could be outdated and maybe these views no longer reflect where you currently stand. You want to see the link again? There it is right there. Take a look for yourself. I've got no problem with that particular link. He's um, linking to something I shared on my Facebook page, Flat Earth Aussie Jesus, which I no longer use because I'm now <laughs> being myself and feeling far more comfortable in my own skin, which does happen to be white. Oh dear. Oh bother. Oh shit. Am, am I now racist because... I am who I am, you know. I've got no problem with the colour of anybody's skin. So, in fact, to me, the darker, the prettier, so. Anyway, my hope is that this could be outdated. So he hopes that me feeling some sort of pride in my own particular colour of skin is outdated and I should feel no pride, I should feel what's the opposite, shame to be who I am and wish that I could be other than what I am no I'm 100% entitled to feel proud of my heritage just as I expect everybody should feel proud of their heritage no matter what tone of skin colour they have if you don't feel pride in who you are then you have to question who is making you feel ashamed and that person who is making you feel ashamed is the racist so he says again as I, I'll repeat my hope is that this could be outdated and maybe these views no longer reflect where you currently stand. What the fuck? I'm not allowed to feel pride in my heritage? I hope you understand I'm trying to learn from you about this situation rather than casting judgement based on feedback from one side. Thank you, James. James Coons. And there you go, you can see all that too. You can screenshot that as much as you like. Even if it is backwards. Um, so there's a series of back and forwards 
emails. I'm just wondering why. Only my most recent one is now showing. I'll just see if I can. Uh, we'll click on seven. <laughs> All right. So I says, I says it. Hi, James. All I say is a desperate attempt to find any excuse to avoid facing the truths which I present. I love and respect all my fellow humans, regardless of skin colour, sex or sexual preferences. However, if I'm being forced in a position where they wish me to treat them as they are treating me, I might occasionally take a light-hearted approach such as suggesting a woman would be better off making sandwiches. An old joke, nothing implied that they're inferior in any way. These carefully hand-picked selection of out-of-context comments are irrelevant. Pardon me, I've got to concentrate on the morning. Are irrelevant to how I treat others day to day. I'm an arbitrator of peace and goodwill. Yet these inferior, scared little boys will grasp at anything to try and discredit me. It's really very sad and disturbing. Rather than give me a fair trial in the light of day. These sort of people seek to undermine my credibility and seem to be following certain protocols which a certain tribe of human beings have been noted for doing since time immemorial. The actual motto is, by way of deception, shall we do war? I'm an open book. I raise three beautiful young human beings into fine young pleasant adults, intelligent and seeking degrees. I see some sort of unfair system in place where a certain small group of people have an unfair advantage over all aspects of our entertainment media, knowledge, training, finances, and it is my free will right as any human being to defend myself against any attacks against me or my family. When we see any other race of people express pride in their heritage, we rightly should be happy for them, and pleased they are free to express it. Yet, why should I be oppressed simply because my ancestors came from the far north and spread civilization throughout all the known world. I have as much right as anyone to be proud and grateful and to continue this partnership towards improving the world in mutual peaceful progression, health and abundance for all. Anything racist about that? If you listen to worm tongues in your ear, you will be deceived. I trust you have the wisdom to decide for yourself to ignore any hate speech directed against me and let just them Justice and wisdom prevail. All the best, Ross. Modern Day Debate then gets back to me. I'm afraid team is sick, so we are postponing to next Saturday, which was last Sunday. Now they've postponed it for another week. And so I just responded, what a shocking surprise. How'd you go with Dave wanting to discuss the faked moon landings? because team did actually email me, not team, James emailed me and said that I've heard you want to discuss other topics, which I do, yeah, flat earth is the only thing I'm interested in. And there's this fellow that goes around calling himself Professor Dave. <laughs> said, oh, flat earth bores me, obviously because he can't win. And so he wanted to discuss the moon landings and now we all know they're faked. He wants to discuss they weren't. And so I said, yeah, mate. Bloody hell, bring it on. I'll be under that. No whacking furries. So that's why I sent that email saying, um, oop, nearly dropped it. I've only got so many arms when I'm doing this. Um, Uh, yeah, what a shocking surprise. How'd you go with Dave when he discussed the faked moon landings? Dave shot it down, I'm afraid. And I would have you on, but I'd like to have it be with bigger names. <laughs> Apparently Dave's too short. <laughs> what he means is, um, because I sent another email in the middle, in the intermediary was saying hey was just looking the live chat apparently there's a harry m keen to step in because um yeah turned dogged out 
No, not team. Skeptic. Team Skeptic. I confused the two of them. Yeah, they're both a bunch of. <laughs> Individual. <laughs> Ass bandits. Um, Toon was just the first one to back out of a debate with me. That was already pre-arranged. And we said we'd go ahead. And he backed out, so... You'll have to forgive me if I sometimes confuse the two. So Team Skeptic... Backed out of that one. Now, it seems, he's really trying to dog out of this one that we've got going for. This Sunday, my... 10 a.m. I think it is. I believe it's your Saturday about 8 or 9 p.m. for those in Yankee land. Um, so, I won't read them all. I'll just read the last one that I, I saw today. Apparently he sent it at 10.20 a.m. Oh, <laughs> into the spill bucket. <sighs> Alright, another box full. So, Modern Day Bay, James Coons. Oh, damn it, I left my marker pen behind there. says, I kid you not, I can have you on if you either recant those views in the link above, or if you debate them against someone. So obviously we're going to have to have a quick look at the um, actual things said in the link above, but I will just quickly read my response, which again, I do it a bit lengthy, because I don't believe in just giving one sentence responses. What are you talking about, James? I shared a link on an obscure page I have on Facebook. They were never my opinions, thoughts, or words. If you ask me to debate something particular, then please be more specific. Are you suggesting my claim that nearly all inventions we have today came from any other race than humans? That in itself would be racist. I did, in fact, say Aryans in the first place. And I'm quite happy to see if, if anybody can come up with the long list of inventions of things we use today, modern technology, that came from somebody other than Aryans. You know, like, I'm quite happy to be sh shown it. And I'll be like, cool, that's nice, excellent, thank you for showing me that. But if, other than that, uh, pretty much most of the technology that I can think of off the top of my head has come through the white man, you know, modern architecture, the internal combustion engine, flight, ships that basically conquered the uncivilized world, you know, I'm not necessarily proud of everything that we've done, but we've pretty much done it all, and other people have copied it, and maybe done a better job of copying it, like the Chinese, you know, unstoppable but where did these inventions come from in the first place I would say it was probably thinking intelligent long bearded white men and I'm not racist by saying that I'm just acknowledging the truth and for me to then say I should not be in any way shape or form proud of these people for doing what they've done is racist of course I should be proud we've brought humanity a long way 
we've done some really good stuff. And yet, we get wiped out, we get eliminated, we get called white trash, Irish, Aryan, whatever, made jokes of, dismissed. Why? We're good people. We're really good people. We've done some really good stuff. We've got every right to be proud of who we are without putting anybody else down because of it. We don't do that. We never have. And that's probably why we get trashed all the fucking time by everybody else. We tell oh, what privilege. There's no privilege. We still have to go out and work. <laughs> we still have to go out and earn our degrees. We still have to do everything. Like, fair enough, yeah, we might have a certain amount of privilege because we're born with a natural amount of intelligence that doesn't require baby stepping around all the time, but that doesn't mean that we're racist for being who we are. Anything but, we are very tolerant. And yet, no matter what we do, we can't do a damn thing right in the eyes of others if we dare turn around and say, I'm quite proud of who I am. I'm quite proud of my ancestors, my grandfather, his grandfather, their grandfather. Like, fair enough, a lot of shitty things happened in the past. Why, certain races over other races. I'll give you that. But it wasn't us. It wasn't my grandfathers. It might have all been peaceful teachers. Farmers, doctors, even the odd preacher. But we weren't soldiers. We can tell you who they were. So, here it is again, once again. We have an opportunity simply to argue or to debate against somebody who chooses or has chosen to be against flat earth. Now, <laughs> you take me back a few years ago, <sighs> I would have debated against flat earth like in a nanosecond. I'd go there but I lost the technology. But um. The flat earth seems such a stupid, stupid concept. I grant you that, <laughs> you know. It seems that way until you do some investigation, until you dig into it, you take a look. You see what you can find to prove evidence of the curvature of the earth. You do what you can to find some evidence of oceans curving. Yeah, on a spinning space ball that's over 70% of the surface covered in water. It's that easy to debunk. It is that easy. That, you know, the first time I heard that we, that the earth was potentially flat, was my father-in-law, big ex well, he is Australian now, so yeah, he's ex-Swedish, but he was born in Sweden. Big Nordic. Swedish fella. Merchant sea captain. Spent all his life on the ocean, apart from the times he spent stevedoring in Newcastle, Australia, New South Wales. Um, when he retired, after spending all this last 10 to a 11, 12 years 
back at sea as a merchant sea captain. I'm sitting at his house one morning. Yeah, we we go and visit occasionally. The ex-wife and I and the grandchildren and spend a the night there. And then in the morning, sitting there, we've we've had breakfast, we're having a coffee, we're reading the newspaper, we're having a chat. And yeah, you know, I used to love listening to his tales about travelling all around the world. Okay. They're very, very interesting. And then out of the blue, he just says to me, I think the world is flat. And to me, it was just like, uh, I thought this man was intelligent. I thought he had all his wits together. I thought, you know... It just threw me for an absolute six, and I was just in shock. I thought, you know, the first thing that I'm seeing in my head, visually, <laughs> is all this water, all these oceans, flowing off into outer space. Because that's what we get programmed with from a very young age. We don't sort of stop and think that uh, maybe we live on a plane that's infinite, that has no edge. Yeah, the first thing is like, give it the water. It's flowing off. <laughs> and that's all I could get. And you know, as I'm driving home later with the wife at the time, I'm saying, oh, your dad has totally lost it. How the hell could he possibly think the Earth is flat? And she just sort of did the usual thing. She just goes into cognitive dissonance over virtually anything I talk about. Chemtrails being the biggest one, of course. And naturally, you want to defend your family, but yeah, she had nothing. It was just beyond her. She, she wasn't that deep of a thinker, I guess. Well, that's cool, yeah. We had three awesome kids together. So anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm in my state of cognitive dissonance. How can the earth possibly be flat? It's just not possible. A few years later, I start to investigate it seriously, simply because one of my Facebook friends who, by the way, I'm no longer friends with, because I do argue everything. And if I see bullshit, I'll say it's bullshit. And some people say that the moon produces its own light. I say it doesn't. And I say if you're going to continue to say it does, then you have to prove it. And you can't prove it. You can prove otherwise that the moon is illuminated by the sun. So therefore, that person, even though he introduced me to Flat Earth, is no longer a friend. Because he unfriended me, blocked me. <laughs> so I told him, stop speaking bullshit. The moon is lit by the sun. I can see that. The moon is lit by the sun. Doesn't mean anything else is lit by the sun other than the Earth we live upon. And doesn't mean that there are other planets or anything, but that's just the way it goes. So, but at the time, I respected him enough, even though I thought he was crazy, when he said he thinks the Earth is flat. I was like, get the fuck out of here. No way. And he provided me a few links. And, you know, the Eric Dubay one, 200 proofs. I looked at him and I was like, Okay, the Earth is flat. What next? And so the journey continues. The Earth is flat. It's not moving. It's not a spinning ball in space. We're not going around the sun. The constellations remain constant because they are constant. They're not moving in this special relationship 
just so from millions of light years away just to keep up the appearance that they're moving with us constantly millions of light years away from each other and so I've reached 30 minutes and that's the end of this video I might stop it and start another one why not still got lots of beer to bottle see you soon